over to her SUV, leans in for a very long kiss, and she leaves the ranch. I am just, I'm devastated. I can't believe somebody would buy somebody a $4,000 engagement ring, take them to Niagara Falls, do all the things that he's done for me just to find somebody else in three short years. I mean, why? So at this point in time, I think you've seen enough, Aaron. I understand you're upset, you're pissed off. So what I wanna do is, why don't we go ahead and get in the vans, get on the road? I'm ready, I'm so pissed off. I don't even know what, what the I'm gonna say to any of them. I'm all just right. too pissed. Let's go. How you doing, Gomez? Hey, Clark, how's it going? It's going, man. Good, Where good, is good. she? All right, we're gonna walk this way, right around the corner from these little R RVs right here. So if we're quiet enough, how close can we get before they know we're right on them? Probably about 50 feet. Okay, that's but, fine. But they're upstairs and, and part of this little bugging thing they got going on over there. Okay. Upstairs okay. what? Well, let's find out. All right, let's go. When we get closer, let's try to be quiet so we can really surprise them, you know? Coming up, the conclusion. They're upstairs and part of this little bucking thing they got going on over there. Let's do this. She doesn't know the wrath of me. You mother What the are you doing here? What the is that? Who is it? Who is she? One of your little ranch hoes? Okay. What's your name? Oh, is she hey. just helping? Okay. Yeah. I'm Clark Gable really? with Cheaters. She's helping? It's nice to meet you. Do you know? His wife. What is all this Apparently the no. cheater, right? Get out of my face! I'm no Get one. Get out of my face! No one. Get my wife! Hey, Listen David. To me. David. Listen to me. Tell me who the f she is and why you're here with her. Do you know who I am? Nope, nope. Yeah, no. I'm his fiance. Yeah, me too. Oh, really? $4,000 and you're gonna go f a ranch hand? No. You buy her a $4,000 ring too? So you're never home. Oh, really? I'm never home because I'm helping your ass all the time. Or no, going to school full time so I can learn how to take care of a ranch. No, you're always at the work. I'm all, okay, whatever. David, what happened, man? I mean, this is a, obviously very- Who the hell problem. are you, man? I'm Clark Gable with Cheaters, and I'm here. Ridiculous. Your fiance, some- ridiculous. No, this is yeah, ridiculous. This is getting right. It's ridiculous. Yeah, because I'm here most of the time. Where are you? Let's Not go, let's here. Go down, let's because go down obviously you're this. here, bitch. Well, good. Maybe you should take care of your man, and then you wouldn't have Worry about it. Are you kidding me? He's no. well taken care of, bitch. I can see that just now. Yeah. Yeah. David, talk to me for a minute. No. Listen, what happened? No. Man. I got, I got, I got surveillance of you bringing her out here to your your grandfather's ranch. Because I understand. Who brought you out here? Your fiance did. She called us because she was worried about you because you've been distant. You haven't been bringing her out here or anything to help you feed or anything like that. So she called us, and that's the only reason why we're here. His dying grandfather father wanted me to help him take care of this ranch. Not you, You're me. Right. I don't want to take care of this ranch. Then get the f out of here. Go out your f in. Fine. See ya. See ya, bitch. I'm the Yep, you heard me. Well, looks how dedicated you are to your man who bought you a ring. Yeah. Because I love this ranch and I love that old man and I love David. Well, we see how well he's working out for you, don't you? You got, you got a girl that you have well, been with for three years, you live with, you, you bring her out to your grandfather's ranch, who from what I understand, your grandfather is a little ill right now. And this seems like a very special place. Do you think you owe an explanation I don't owe you nothing, man. Not me. You don't know my grandfather. You love me or her? Me or her? I love you. Do you? Yes. Then why the f did you get her? It's okay, can I, when did he buy you this ring? Not too long ago. Not too long ago? Nope. And what were his uh, intentions behind that ring? Well, I thought they were to follow through, but apparently he's got a little bit other things on his mind, huh? Did he ever tell you that he had a significant other that he lived with and shared three years of his life with? I wouldn't have been here if he did. Thank you. Your grandfather is dying, and he begged me and you, David, in the hospital to take care of him, and you did this to me. 
And the only reason why I'm still standing here is because I love you and I love your grandfather. Oh. But I am pissed. I'm so pissed. After everything that we've said to each other, everything we've done here, that's who you're going home with. And all honesty, I don't think you should go home with either of us. But that's just my personal opinion. I apologize to you. But apparently, you don't know how to keep your in your pants. And I'm done with it. Exactly, because obviously he keeps schedules separate. And that's something we're going to have to discuss. Been, he hasn't been letting her come out here. Why don't you go after your man? He's running away. Yeah, he'll come back. He always does. I want to beat your ass, but because you didn't know, it's just keeping me from doing it. Just so you know, get off. Keep in the get ring. Off. I'm done with you. You understand? Fine. Get off my ranch. It's getting sold, and I want all of my back, and you're not getting your back. You can keep it. I can. I'll keep it. Get the up. Go. Touch me. I swear to God. Stay the hell away from me. Let me tell you what, bitch. <laughs> Hold on. Don't with me. I swear to God, I will knock the out of you. Why are we even fighting over him? Why? I asked you the same thing that I probably heard him say the same words to me that he has said to you. Do the other way. What if I didn't know about you and I caught you two together? I didn't know how long. I'm no, sorry. You didn't. Because I didn't know about you. So you're doing it to the wrong person. You know what? I changed my mind. Let's leave. I'm good. All right, Bye. let's go. You can keep your ring, David. Following the confrontation, Erin finds herself at odds between her disgust of the suspect's actions and her love for her fiance. At the end of the episode, Cheaters fills you in on her final decision. But next, Tom LeBlanc discusses what life has been like since he lost his girlfriend on Cheaters. Well, the day of the confrontation, when I found out Taylor was, of course, cheating on me, and I was crushed, you know, when um, I was looking at the footage, I was just like in disbelief. I couldn't even believe that this was happening. Like I was at a loss for words. All I could do was just be emotional and that's, I just felt a heartache. Cause it's like, I spent two years, she kinda came into my life and rearranged it, changed it all for the positive. And then in the blink of an eye, she just didn't care. She just did the dirt and was with old buddy. I don't even know her name, but it was like, why? For what? Come on! Man, who the Bro, who the who are you, bro? What's up, What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What the hell? What are you doing here? Why you got all these cameras over here? I thought she was at work. What's up? 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 this uh, situation, because she really did, you know, play a part in helping me and influence me positively. And at uh, about that four month mark, I was just like, man, I can't keep being pouty faced and sad all the time. So I went out, started meeting people, started meeting the females and stuff. And so now I just talk, talk with females and I'm not even rushing anything. We having fun doing our thing, so. Look, how long have I been trying to get pregnant? I haven't been, okay? And once I have, and I lost it, I realized, like, So you want to mess with him? Huh? You want to mess him before he was pregnant? Before we thought he was pregnant? I was. It, I knew it was yours. So you, it was yours. It could not have been It mine. was yours. It was yours. But, I mean. Come on, baby. Let's go. Get these cameras on my face, man. Do you have anything else to say? Get these cameras on my face. Let's go. Well, this whole situation allowed me to grow in a tremendous amount. I mean, I know it hurt, but at the end of the day, it just let me know that I need to keep my guard up with people. I mean, not, not, be, not be to the fact that I'm not open to love, but also be mindful of the fact that you have to figure out who people are before you date them. You have to figure out what are their motives, what are they into, what, what are their goals and their morals and ethics and different things, and you have to use that you know, and then give it time to manifest into something, not just rush into it.
Following the confrontation, Erin Shields realizes that she has a tough road ahead of her. Taking the suspect back into her life despite the affair, Erin admits her love for him. Erin now accompanies the suspect to the ranch to assist him and keeps a close eye on him. In the end, the suspect David feels grateful that his fiance decided to take him back. David tells cheaters, I love her and I'd do anything for my girl. I just don't know what got into me. The suspect's companion, Kayla, would only state to cheaters that she had said everything she has. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. Well, you know, I met Lamont at a nightclub, and we hit it off really strong, and it just seems like we were seeing each other every day. He come to find out he actually stayed about three to four blocks away from me. So it was like every day we were seeing each other, texting, talking to each other on the phone, just spending a lot of time going to the park and, you know, just enjoying each other's company. Now it's like he started working as a delivery guy and he moved to Uptown. He just don't have time for me. And I just, I feel like it's something going on. Lamont age 27, a delivery driver accused of delivering his love to another woman. Cheater's detective set up a perimeter around the suspect's residence. After a while, Laman emerges and walks a short way to a nearby restaurant where he greets an unknown woman. The two grab a table. Cheater's investigators watch the innocence dissolve. The suspect kisses his mystery lunch date. Sometime later, Lamont and his pretty woman walk hand in hand down the avenue to her parked car. The number one thing that really hit the nail on the head was, you know, I got a really big promotion at work and we were both excited because it's like, okay, you know, things are finally working out for the both of us, not just for him, but for me also. So we decided, hey, you know, let's go out, let's celebrate, let's have a good time. And he was like, you know, hey, I'll be there at nine. And here it is, you know, 1040 and no call, no show or anything. So I call him and I'm like, hey, where you at? You know, like, don't you remember we had a date? And he's like, oh, busy, something came up. You know, I have to actually go into work. I can't come see you. Um, we'll have to reschedule it. And, you know, this is bull. I want to see you. I want to spend time with you. This is supposed to be our celebration. We're supposed to be happy together. Why would he hang up on me? Why would you not answer your phone? It's been like two or three days since I've talked to him, and I don't understand that. Like, we talk every day, and now he hung up. He's not answering, and I just feel like he's cheating on me with someone else. The pair frolic for a few minutes by the car, intimately saying goodnight. The young lady drives away as Lamont walks home, ending this evening's fun. Lamont basically started with nothing. So he went from staying with his mom to, you know, just chilling every day, not doing anything, just, you know, free as he wants to be. And I just feel like, you know, I'm sticking with you. I'm down for you, whatever you needed. I was helping you make sure you had it. And, you know, who's going to put up with that? Like, how are you going to start with me at the bottom? And then once you make it to the top with your new job and moving to Uptown, you don't have time for me. You don't. You don't have time to see me, spend time with me, talk to me, or text me. I'm just saying, if I catch Lamont cheating on me with someone else, another bitch, or whatever the case may be, me and him are gonna have a problem, and I just don't see myself being with him because you don't leave what you started with for something new because you feel like, oh, it's different. Cheater's agents post up outside the suspect's residence and wait for him to surface. Cheater's PIs tag along for the ride as Lamont drives away. The suspect arrives at his destination, where the woman from the previous day, now identified only as Asia, waits for him. Lamont and Asia drive to a restaurant. Crossing the lot, they hold hands. Inside the taco joint, the suspect and his goddess enjoy a nice meal. When finished, Lamont and Asia leave. The suspect drives his sweetheart back to her vehicle. Before she leaves, however, the suspect races back to his vehicle to retrieve an item Asia left in his car. Lamont teases the woman for a moment, then he kisses his companion. As the two leave the scene, Cheater's gumshoes wrap up the night of surveillance. As with previous days, investigators continue with the stakeout of Lamont's house. Soon the suspect makes his appearance. 
Lamont walks down the street to his rendezvous, where Asia greets him with a hug. Lamont and Asia hold hands as they continue down the street to a nearby restaurant. The two lovers grab a table on the patio. An appetizer of kisses comes before the main course. Sometime later, having finished their meal, the suspect and his companion head back to Lamont's residence. After a few hours, the suspect and Asia materialize on the street. The pair hold hands as Lamont walks his paramour back to her parked vehicle. Upon arrival at the car, the suspect and the young lady share a few intimate kisses. Asia finally pulls away from Lamont's embrace. The suspect holds the door open for his girlfriend. And as Lamont closes the car door, Cheaters shuts the lid on the case. Coming up, the confrontation. With no doubt about the suspect's indiscretion, Cheaters notifies Mimi about her boyfriend's unfaithful tendencies. Reluctant to let him get the best of her, Mimi conjures up the strength to view the findings. Mimi, I'd like to say thank you for coming out this evening. I understand you have a lot going on, so we'll just get right into this. All right, Mimi, well, as you know, we have conducted our investigation. My question for you is, are you prepared to see what we have come up with? I don't know if I'm prepared, but I'm ready to, you know, see what's going on and finally have the truth. All right, fair enough. Mimi, on this day of our investigation, we are outside of Lamont's house. A few moments later, he arrives at a bar and greets this unknown female with a hug. They then kiss and share some drinks at this bar. So you're smiling. A while later, after finishing up the drinks at the bar, they walk across the street holding hands, laughing, being rather playful. We see Lamont put his arm around her as they walk through his neighborhood. I can't believe this. This is really up. Like, are you serious? They arrive at the female's car and embrace the hug, a kiss, and being very playful. We see Lamont kissing her again. He opens her car door for her, and she gets inside. Continuing on with our investigation, Mimi, on this day, we are outside of Lamont's residence. A few moments later, we see Lamont emerge. He walks over to his vehicle and he gets inside and leaves. As our detectives follow Lamont, he picks up the same woman from the previous day. She gets out of her vehicle and she gets into his. You still don't recognize her? No. All right, Mimi, they drive for some time and they arrive at a restaurant. As our detectives follow them, they park the vehicle and walk in together holding hands. This is the thanks I get, really? They go into this restaurant and he receives a phone call. What you're about to hear is the audio from that phone call, Mimi. Tell me if you remember this. Hey, babe, what you doing? I'm just open the Oh, yeah, I'm getting a seat today. I mean, I have to think I'm kind of tired. You know, I got to go to work in the morning. You kind of um, tired? If I find that you with some bitch in Uptown, I'm going to you up. I'm not playing with you. You in there, how can you get it? This is your business? Completely lying to you. Saying I love you. Exactly. And you just right. called him out too on his bluff. After finishing up the phone call, they get out of the restaurant and they leave together. They return to that woman's vehicle. He walks her over to her vehicle once again. But before she leaves, Lamont goes back over to his car and retrieves something, what looks to be a phone charger. You see, he dangles it in front of her face and then he gives it to her, along with a very, very long romantic kiss. They continue to kiss with her car door open. After she gets in the car, she leaves. He goes back home. Why don't we go ahead and get on the road? We're gonna give Detective Gomez a call and get a location on where Lamont is, and we'll go from there, all right? Okay, I'm ready. I want to know the truth. All right, right this way. All right. Okay. Just point him out. Right. Right there. Really? That's what this is? Are you serious? What you talking like, about? Like, you so much, you busy, you gotta work late, you don't have time for me. Man. Who the f is this? That's my homegirl, what you Your mean, homegirl. man? 
Oh, so you making time for your homegirl, but you can't make time for me. But you said you love me and you care about me. What you mean, man? What's up, my homegirl? We having a drink. Have you seen me do anything out of line? We sitting there at the table having a drink, man. But you said that you too tired. You don't have time for me. Are you about to do for real? What's wrong with having a drink after work, man? A lot's wrong with having a drink after work. Make time for me. Make that drink happen with me, not her. Who the is that? Man, this is just my homegirl. Your homegirl? Is this how you really drinks with your homegirl? Do you kiss all your homegirls? Man, I'm slap you. Ooh, stop ooh, playing with me. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> That's how you feel? That's exactly how I feel. You look like good you tonight. can't just really? Yeah, I look good today. Yeah, really? You look good tonight. How you gonna say I look good Excuse today, me. but you with this? You with this hoe? Really? Good today. Excuse me, man. Okay, I'm really? Go, man. You finna go? Yeah, yeah, Where I you going? Go, Coming up next, the conclusion. What this is? Who the f is this? That's my homegirl. What you Yo, mean, girl. Man, I'm gonna slap you. Ooh, stop Ooh. playing with me. So did he tell you that he's been with that girl for four years? No, like you had no idea. What, what the f is going on, like? I'm Clark Gable this? with the television show Cheaters. The reason why I'm here is because this woman over here has been with this man for four years. Man, Lamont, talk talking. to me. Man, ain't nothing to talk about. It's what you mean? Girl, it ain't nothing to talk about. about. It's a lot that's to talk home about. Home you up here lying to me? Really? That's my homegirl. You your homegirl? Your homegirl? Home well, well, then talk to me then. I didn't know anything about a girlfriend. None of this. Like, so what? And what is, is your name? Going on? Asia. Asia? Yeah. All right, Asia. Well, I really appreciate that. And he told you he didn't have a girlfriend or anything? No. Like, what? What the f is going on? Like, why don't you go ask him? He's going this way. Come on. How long have you guys been seeing each other? You said six months? Yeah, for like the past five to six months. Be your girl. You are. That's just my whole friend and associate, man. But you're not even making time for man, me. But you're making time for your homegirl. Get out of here, people. You so about you, you, you working really late? Okay. What do you want to talk about? Come on. I want to talk about how you going to be up here with your homegirl when you don't even make time for me. Like, five-minute phone calls, text messages you don't even answer. So, what is... What is this? What is going on? Man, you don't like, even need to worry about this. Go find you some business. This ain't got nothing to do with you. Like, Lamar, what, ha what happened, man? What are you doing? What's your name? You are. Bay? Where the f this bay come from? Lamar, you don't have anything. You don't have anything to say? What? What? You what do you want me to say? Are you huh? That's what you can say. Tell me the it truth. Is what it is. You it is. What it is. I mean, it is what it is. What it is. Like, what it is. No, what you? Truth, Lamont. Not going anywhere. I'm right behind you. Don't even think about it. Where are we going? What are you parking? Where's she going? Come on, man. Come on. I live bull. What, you, what the f is this? You gonna leave with her? You gonna leave with this bitch? Four years, Lamont. That's a long time, man. People change, man. Change? Over six months? I understand you just moved out of town six months ago. Nothing. Everything you got to ask us of me. And I appreciate all that. You appreciate that? We not on the same level no more. What happened? I left on clear. I understand yeah, I that. It made me who I am, but. I'm in a new environment, new man now. I appreciate everything you've done for me. So you gonna leave your old club bitch for this uptown hoe, really? No longer old club. This is where I stay. Uptown. You supposed to always be old club. You better no, not come to the hood. No, what we gonna no. f you up? F you in that bitch. God bless you. Y'all have a wonderful night. Come on, let's go. God bless y'all. Y'all have a wonderful night. Y'all have a good day. God doesn't bless people that commit infidelity. Yeah. Hey, here he comes. He's walking up behind us. I don't know if he wants to talk. For what? I don't know. He's walking up right here. I don't know. What could he possibly have to say? Do you want to talk to him? <laughs> Calm down. Look. I love you too much. You got too much respect for you for the end like this. You got no respect for me because if you did, you went over here with her. Talking about your homegirl. Talking about drinks. Then you talking about babe. Really? You leaving Oak Cliff alone? Leave it alone. 
Don't lie to me. What you gonna lie to me for? I mean, that's why I came back. Like I said, I got too much love and respect before the end like this. I came back to let it know that that's pretty much what it is now, man. I mean, the good but times. But what you heard for then? Go be with your uptown bitch. What you heard for? Cause I, like I say, I come to man, talk to you, man. you ain't got nothing to explain to me. Bye. So it's, See it's, you. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't supposed to be like this, man. What? I moved it wasn't out supposed here. to be like this. I moved you out. Right? That's not how you gonna tell me we're supposed to have something, we're gonna be together. We're trying to make plans for our kids, our family, and stuff like this. But this is what you show. This is this what you. Where your morals, where your respect, where anything else. You ain't got none of that. Yeah. Just you. Bye. You really gotta talk like that? I'm, I'm serious. All these, man. these people, I don't care about you. Talk to you. Like, this is exactly oh, what I yes. don't This is exactly what I don't want, man. Man, I got s knocking on my door all the time. But I you? This the thanks I get? Really? I don't need you. But when you fall on your ass and you don't have nothing no more, make sure that's and who and you win. I can't even say I appreciate everything you done me. You don't like appreciate me. I, down, you I didn't have you you done for me, man. Bye. And I appreciate Bye. all this. Look, you don't even need her. Yeah, you don't need me. You don't need me. Come on. That's what you want. You got it. Line it up. You got it. With the confrontation now behind her, Mimi asserts her independence. Later, Cheaters divulges her present circumstances. But now, Chris Rowe comes in to give you his take about the time he was busted on Cheaters. What was happening, we were having fun, we had some food. Um, Cindy and I had been guitar student and pupil for just like about a month or so, and nothing was intentional. Things just happen. It, and once we were sitting there enjoying, I saw these lights at the door. And then as soon as I saw her, I saw Catherine, I thought it was a joke. What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm wait, listening wait, wait, to wait, music wait, wait, and you were messing up this guy's set. No, 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 no. Hold on. Hold on. I'm Catherine. Uh, Why don't you be behind us? Hi. Has he ever mentioned me to you? Chris. No. You were messing up this guy's set. How, how we met was uh, she's a friend of a friend who needed guitar lessons. She, she came over and we started playing and uh, there was just a little connection between us. Obviously, she's a pretty girl. Um, I felt a little something between us. It happens. And one thing led to another. It wasn't planned. Uh, I, I wasn't scouting this situation that I wanted to present itself. It just happened. We all make mistakes and um, I'm having to live with the consequence. I'm willing to let this go, to forgive you, and, and move on. I'm such a dog, on, why are you even sitting here talking to me? I'm not calling you a dog. Those are your words, not mine. Chris, you're not a dog, you're not anything. You're just someone that made a mistake, and that's all. And I'm just here to find out what your mistake why, why was. You just go just away. get your hands off me, bro. Do not touch me, all right? I'm not here you're, to upset you're the you. One over here I'm not here to disrespect my face. you. I'm trying you to owe talk her to her. Some answers. Well, some I'm not going to do it in front of you. Then where are you going to do it? In private. In private, you're going to go hide in your apartment where you bring other women. You're going to go do that? I've had enough of this. I wish Catherine the best. Our relationship is really not much of one anymore. I just turned 40 the other day, and I'm reflecting back. I I, I remember writing a paper in high school that I thought that I would have gone to university of of like Texas or, or Oklahoma or somewhere, and then I would have become a veterinarian, had a wife and a couple kids, and lived just like the Brady Bunch. That's what I thought was going to happen to me. But then I got the music bug, and it just never did. And I met Catherine, and we were a good team. And so it went on forever. Where am I at my relationships now? I date here and there. I don't have anybody special in my life. If the girl I'm supposed to be with finally comes into my life, and I'm the one for her, and she's the one for me, then maybe something will happen. As of right now, I just date whenever I can. Mimi Barber grieves for the loss of her relationship. However, she's grateful for the help of cheaters in uncovering the disingenuous actions of her now ex-boyfriend. The suspect, Lamont, discloses to cheaters how close he had become to his companion. The suspect has moved his companion into his residence. Lamont's companion, Asia, remains on a... ...has been spotty. Nicole approaches cheaters for help in answering her questions. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters.
Me and John have been married for a little bit over 16 years, and for the most part, the marriage has been great. We have three beautiful children, and um, we've been having a lot of financial problems, and this job um, had, uh, had come, so there was a move, and he ended up moving. But here lately, um, he just seems that when he comes in town, he's he's not into us. He's distracted. He's on his phone all the time. He just um, he was very much of a family man, um, full of love. The excitement was there, and it's just not there anymore. It's like there's something. John Lombardi, age 39, an advertising sales representative suspected of using his job position to create a merger with another woman. Soon after setting up a perimeter around the suspect's residence, Cheetah's detectives spot their mark getting into his truck and leaving home. Unaware of his Cheetah's tail, Lombardi drives across town to an upscale coffee shop. Upon arrival, he greets an unknown woman with a hug. Lombardi and his coffee date snag a table on the sidewalk. We would Skype every night, and we would Skype for, you know, lengthy amount of time with the children, and he was always so excited, and it was just that love and that passion in his eyes, and it's gone. He's always quick to um, get off of Skype, and even one time this Natalie girl was there, and he said that she was just leaving, which I thought was very strange, at a, you know, at 9 o'clock at night, um, why that she would be there with him. I had asked him about, you know, her being there so late when I had Skyped the next morning, and he was just, like, dancing around it. And, you know, he just really wouldn't give me an explanation. Um, it was just that, that they were working late, and I found it just very suspicious. After a while, Lombardi and his mysterious partner leave the coffee shop, and the pair walk down the avenue to an organic grocery store. After a quick stop, they emerge from the store and continue their stroll down the lane to a spa. Sometime later, Cheater's agents catch the duo as they walk back toward the coffee shop. Lombardi escorts his companion to her parked car. The suspect gives the woman a hug goodbye. Lombardi steps away as the lady gets into her car and leaves. He then gets back into his truck and drives home for the evening. The final straw was this ticket. Um, the date just sticks out in my mind because it was my, mo my mom's birthday, and he was very sick that day, apparently. And at 12.55 a.m., um, he was out on the road, and he ended up getting a ticket. Well, the ticket came to the house. And to me, it's like all of these web of lies are coming together, and it puts him under this cloud of suspicion. I, I can't imagine or fathom him cheating on me, but all of these suspicions are there, and I just need to know, we need to know, my children need to know. The cheater squad keeps vigil over Lombardi's second home. The suspect carrying an umbrella gets into his truck to leave. He pulls out and drives away. A cheater's mobile unit tracks Lombardi through the wet streets to a Chinese restaurant. The suspect parks next to a familiar vehicle, the driver of which has apparently been waiting. Lombardi greets the woman from previous surveillance, now identified only as Natalie. Hiding under the umbrella, the couple enter the establishment. Inside, Lombardi and Natalie enjoy a sumptuous meal of oriental cuisine. After some time, the duo finish the meal, and Lombardi escorts his dinner date back to their vehicles. The suspect gives his sweetheart a spicy kiss. Natalie gets into her car as Lombardi climbs into his truck. Leaving the parking lot, the companion follows the suspect. Cheater's investigators covertly tailed the illicit lovers all the way back to Lombardi's residence. Lombardi and Natalie get out and enter the home. After a few hours, Cheater's detectives spy Lombardi's forbidden girlfriend leaving his abode, ending this night of surveillance. Cheater's private eyes continue surveillance of Lombardi's home. After a while, Natalie arrives. Interior cameras placed by Nicole give a view of Natalie entering the home. The woman sits down and Lombardi seductively rubs his companion's thigh as he joins her on the sofa. 
The suspect pulls out his notepad and shows the young lady a few things. Apparently, he says something that pleases his guest, and Lombardi gives Natalie a quick hug. As the suspect goes into the kitchen, Natalie picks up her bags and heads into another room. Lombardi returns with a bottle of wine and two glasses. The suspect dims the lights, setting a romantic mood. Lombardi pours the chilled wine. After a short period, Natalie emerges from the other room in a sexy bit of whirling lingerie showing off her lovely body. The couple toast each other, and Natalie sits down next to the suspect. Lombardi embraces his femme fatale, beginning a sultry makeout session. The suspect kisses his sexy companion for quite some time. Eventually, the pair stand up. Lombardi again kisses his sex pot, and they move locations. The duo glide into the bedroom for more intimate fun. When Nicole finally leaves, Cheaters makes a move to contact a heartbroken Nicole. Coming up, the confrontation. Confirming all suspicions of infidelity, Cheaters contacts Nicole to review the case facts. Horrified of losing her husband, Nicole stiffens up and steps forward to examine all findings. First thing I'd like to say, Nicole, is thank you for coming out. I understand you drove a pretty extensive amount of time to get out here, a few hours. You had to get a babysitter for your children. As you know, we have collected evidence about what John is doing. Are you ready to see what we've come up with? I don't know if I'm ready, but I need to. Okay, fair enough. Nicole, we begin our investigation outside of that rental house, 300 miles away from your home. You see John's truck parked in the driveway. A few moments later, he emerges, gets into his truck, and he leaves. As he's backing out, our detectives follow him, and he arrives at a coffee shop. He parks his truck. That's when we see John get out of his vehicle, and he meets this woman. Is this Natalie? Yes. They sit down for coffee, and I see him flipping through a couple pages of a book, magazine. A while later, they walk into a grocery store together. That's when we see them exit, and they walk into a day spa. After finishing up at the spa, he walks back over to her vehicle. They exchange a few words. They hug. He then opens her car door, escorts her into her vehicle, and she leaves. John then walks away, gets into his truck, and exits. Are you okay? Oh, yeah. Nicole, on this day of our investigation, we are outside of that rented residence. That's when we see Natalie's car pulls up and she parks in the driveway. Ugh. Do you recall that surveillance equipment that I gave you when you went up to visit him with the kids and I told you to just put it in the living room? Yeah. Well, that next shot is what you're going to see inside the house. You go to the interior shot, you see John letting her inside. She's carrying a bag with her. They sit down on the couch together. And I see him holding an iPad on one side and then some paperwork on the other, doing his training stuff. He then receives a phone call during this. What you're about to hear is the audio from that phone call, Nicole. Tell me if you remember this. Hey, babe, what's going on? Hey, how are you? Hey, I'm doing okay. I'm just kind of, I'm kind of busy working right now. What can I help you with? What can you help me with? Okay, that, right, that's, okay that's the wrong choice of words. I'm sorry, I just, I'm busy working. What do you need? Well, this is like our time, and you know, we miss that's you. Right. We want to talk to you, and this is. I, I'm sorry, I, for, I didn't mean to forget about Scott. Can you just tell the kids that I, I promise I'll, I'll Skype with them tomorrow? I just can't right now. <laughs> just okay, whatever. Tell the kids I'll promise to Skype with them, and I love you. You got to be kidding me. He walks back inside. He walks out of the frame of this camera. She grabs her clothing, and a few moments later, he comes back with an ice bucket, and some champagne. The lights get dimmed. John sits on the couch. She disappears with some bags and reappears in that outfit. High heels and a very, very skimpy dress. That's when John lays in for a very romantic kiss and they begin to make out. No. They make out extensively. John then leads her into the bedroom before exchanging another kiss. What we could do is we can get in the vans, get on the road, and confront John. And my question is, are you ready to do that? Are you ready to do that? 
No? Are you okay? Are you okay? Oh my god. Are you alright? Oh my god. Listen. I'm so sick. No, no, no it's, it's okay. Listen, listen, oh listen. My god. I understand. I understand, okay? God, it's okay. I'm, just I'm so sorry. No, don't like be I sorry. Don't be sorry. No, it's not. You're good. You're good. Are you alright? <laughs> oh god. Oh god. Are you okay? Oh god. We know where he's at. Let's get in the van, let's get on the road, and let's go confront John. Right this way, please. Take your time. Watch your step. All right. Right this way. What the hell is it? What is happening? What the hell is this? What the hell is this? What's your problem? Who is she? What's going on here? She's the girl I've been training. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. What? What are you doing here? What the f is all this? John, is this how you train your, your woman? What are you talking about? What that's your hell? training, correct, from work? Yeah, that's my training. What? We're just sitting there. What do you got? Say no! What? There's candles over there? You're sitting there? Is yeah, we're outside. We're just outside no, enjoying the night. What are you? I sat there and saw the footage. Is this what you footage? guys sitting there? Do you guys sit and kiss, too? John, what happened? 16 years of marriage? Yeah, 16 years of marriage! What? What? Yeah, three kids! Did you know that? Three kids! Wait, you're divorced. No, we're not divorced. We're very married. Coming up, the conclusion. We know where he's at. Let's go confront John. What the hell is it? Who is she? She's the girl I've been training. Yeah? You're divorced. No, we're not divorced. We're very married. I, I, this I, is why you don't Skype me at night because of her? It was one You're night I didn't slut. Skype you. I Skype you yeah. all the time. You know what this is? No, I don't know what this is. So it's like a SWAT team. My name what is the Paul hell? Gable. This is the show Cheaters. She hired well, us. Frankly, I don't give a damn. That's, that's really funny, for? man. Uh, John! Okay, yes. Are you married? Yes. Son of a bitch. I know. I'll Ring. Yeah, where's your ring? I don't know. Hey, y'all like my glasses. I can't see now. Y'all like my damn glasses. What is the? Y'all need to get. Y'all need to get out of here. Man. Here you go, man. We found your glasses. If I put these back on, hey, if I put these back on you, will you talk to them and give her an explanation, what, please? I don't, I, I, That's your wife okay, of 16 maybe I years. Know. Six, oh. Come on, John. What happened? I don't know what happened, man. Life happens, dude. I'm at an age where I don't. You know, I, I just haven't been happy. I, maybe this ain't the right way, but I damn sure wasn't expecting all this. The only, the only reason why this happens is because you moved into this house. I understand you rented it for work purposes. I realize that, but you know what? It's, yeah, I've been it's here a, a year, and she she's not coming. She's she she's been in Austin, so yeah, I've been here a year pretty much by myself. She come doesn't come up here very often. She's got her own friends. She got her friend Keg that she goes and sees all the time. I mean, I I, I don't I, I just I haven't been happy, and so I got like maybe I got lonely, and I met her. You know what? But I fell in love with her. You fell in love with somebody. I fell in love with someone else. Yes, I'm. I'm sorry. Within a period of six months. But you never know who you're gonna fall in love with. You, I haven't been happy been for the last. You're right. I haven't for been happy. Years. I haven't been happy with her for the last ten years. Son of a bitch. And you don't know our don't. life. You Listen. don't know our whole sixteen years. So you can't sit there and stand here and and. and me when you don't know I, what our life has been. I have multiple days of you guys spending time together. I have him taking you to their favorite Look, restaurant. I told her to put an internal surveillance camera inside. What the hell inside. is this doing? Bull man. You think that is? What about all this? What is this? Look, you think Horse? I, okay, it, it looks like I'm the only one that is just doing things wrong when you have no idea what she's done to me. What have I done to you? What have I really? done to you? What kind I have of, done nothing to I've you. I've been working my ass off. been a wife for 16 off. years, busting my ass you being can't. a housewife. Really? Yes, oh, I cooked really? your dinners. No, I bull oh, bull you, did I come home with dinner half oh, the time? God, you're I've so been sitting here working my so ass off, trying to make a living for it. You can't even give me a Colbert. A Colbert? Yeah. A Can bit. you even speak English? You know what I mean. That's bull. Oh my God. You know, this is, this is. You are. You When's are, last time? I'm we done. Are, no, we, well, good because it was going to be done anyway because yeah, I fell in love with her. But you couldn't even sit there and tell me. I haven't about had it. a chance to you tell you. Tell me I have not it. had a chance to tell you. Yeah, really? How long has this been going on? This has been going on for months. You hired this. Bitch, son of a bitch. What, the, what are you mad at, Natalie? Don't look. I did not get a chance to tell you the truth, and I apologize for that. But I. <laughs> John, you have anything to say? Your no, elbow's I, bleeding, I, by the way. I need a beer. <laughs> Get the out of my way! Get out of the following me! 
why aren't you holding yourself accountable for these actions? I don't know, man. Maybe because I've gotten older and I don't, and I, I just, I, 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 I just don't feel like I'm happy anymore. I haven't been happy. It's something that I've just been. I guess I didn't talk to her and tell her I haven't been happy. <laughs> You okay? No. You feel like you got what you wanted though? That's what's most important. I am devastated, I'm sick, I'm disgusted. Angered and disgusted by the suspect's actions, Nicole makes the hardest decision of her life. At the end of the show, Cheaters reveals her verdict. But now, Nick Wesson comes into the Cheater Studios. Wesson explains the circumstances of his girlfriend's arresting bust on the day he was exposed by Cheaters. When I got caught uh, cheating on a row, I uh, pretty much my whole world collapsed and uh, I, I really, I knew I'd been making a mistake. I didn't know that, um, you know, that she was gonna catch me like she did. It was really, uh, really embarrassing. Really? Really? So this is the kind of things I get? Hey, this is the kind of things I get? Hey, bro, hey, really? Hey, really? Hey, what you hey, got hey, going hey, on? Hey, what you doing, man? Hey, girl, hey, really? Yeah, this is the treatment I get? Calm down, For real? Calm down, calm down. For real, no. What no, what, what hey, you hey, mean it ain't baby, what it look baby, like? Yeah. What you mean it ain't what it look like? Yeah, after the confrontation, me and Elizabeth really didn't have much to say to each other. You know, we stopped speaking almost immediately. One of the things that I did feel bad about was uh, Roe had told me she was pregnant before that night. And, um, you know, so after uh, Roe got out of jail and everything, we kind of talked things over a little bit and lasted a few more uh, weeks until I found out she wasn't pregnant. You know, now it's too late to go talk to Elizabeth. I'm not really worried about that. I just have to move on. It's Sit down there. What's your ID? I have an ID. I'm your friend. Have you ever had a before? Absolutely. Get out of there. Hey, go. Now we're going to start arresting people. All right, guys. Load up, guys. Load up. Load up. The way I coped with the situation and the entire experience is just the way anybody would, just moving forward, uh, finding things to occupy my time. I wouldn't say I cheated on Ro. I would say that Ro uh, pushed me to cheat on her. When you were constantly accusing somebody of being unfaithful and you're insecure about your own relationship, it really pushes that other person towards uh, someone else on the outside. And you really become less desirable because of your, uh, your shortcomings and putting that on me. You know, so I don't, I don't really feel bad about it. Like I said, things happened because of it, definitely. But I don't feel bad about it. Following the confrontation, Nicole Lombardi declares to cheaters she's filed for divorce. Nicole has changed the locks on her house and has refused all contact from the suspect. According to John Lombardi, the end of the relationship has been a long time coming. The suspect claims to Cheaters producers, this divorce is the best thing to happen to me in years. The suspect's companion, Natalie, confirms that she and the suspect Cheaters. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. I started to notice a change in the relationship when I was incarcerated for four months. Um, the last two months that I was incarcerated, um, I was having a hard time getting a hold of Mike. So I would call and he wouldn't answer. And it just felt like there was distance between us. Mike Jones, age 31, a carpenter accused of demolishing his relationship in order to build another. Brief for the particulars of the case, cheaters' agents follow the suspect from the home he shares with Stephanie. Jones pulls into an unknown apartment complex. The suspect greets an unknown female with a salacious hug. The young woman climbs onto the back of Jones' metal steed. From there, the pair take off. Shadowed by a cheater's team, Jones and his lovely lady arrive at a neighborhood park. 
The cheater squad follows the lovers as they walk, hand in hand, to the edge of the lake. Uh, when I do confront Mike and ask him if anything's going on or if I have suspicion that, you know, he's seeing someone else, he just gets very defensive. He would just get mad and hang up the phone. That's while I was in jail. And then when I got out, he would just leave for hours at a time. And um, I would ask him where he's going and he would be, you know, very vague. He would just say, I'm going with the guys. And he would just go out on his motorcycle and just, you know, be gone for hours at a time. I was cleaning our bedroom and I come across a pair of panties and they're not my panties and I don't fit in them. And I know for sure, a hundred percent sure that they're not mine. And I don't even know if I want to ask him about them quite yet, because um, I really don't want to know that he is cheating on me. I, I think he might be. A few hours later, the suspect and his sexy lady clamber back onto the hog. The bikers arrive at the house the client shares with the suspect. Jones and his unknown hottie enter the residence. Sometime later, the two leave, and Jones returns his tandem rider back to her apartment. The suspect signals the end of the day with a goodbye kiss, and then rides off into the sunset. For the last two years, he's been loyal. Um, he's been there for me when no one else has, and um, I just am really hurt. I mean, he is my best friend. Um, we've been through a lot of things together. If Mike's cheating on me, and I find out that he is, um, I'm gonna flip out, you know? I love Mike, and I don't want him to leave me, and I don't even know what gives him the reason to leave me. And if I catch him with someone else, I can't tell you that I'm gonna be cordial. I can't tell you that I'm gonna be okay, because I know, I know me, and um, my love for Mike, I'm not gonna have any understanding. With knowledge that Stephanie is out of town for the evening, Cheater's operatives stake out the client in the suspect's home. Jones hops onto his bike and motors to the apartment complex seen on previous surveillance. A short time later, the woman, now identified as Brandy Folger, climbs on behind Jones. The riding duo travel to an unknown residence. After some time, Jones and Folger leave, taking the route to the home he shares with Stephanie. The pair enter the house where Folger spends the night. With Stephanie out of town again, Cheater's detectives continue the stakeout, and they spot Jones as he leaves his home. Upon arrival at Folger's apartment, the young companion eagerly climbs onto the suspect's ride. Folger and Jones drive back to the suspect's home. The couple hold hands as they enter the house. Interior cameras placed by Stephanie record the lusty encounter. Folger gives Jones a sultry lap dance, teasing him as she works off her skirt. Jones stares, mesmerized by the sight in front of him. Folger continues to dance, stripping away bits of clothing. When the last piece of apparel hits the floor, Folger leads the adulterous suspect into the bedroom. Sometime later, a giddy Jones escorts his dirty dancer to his motorcycle. Folger and Jones climb aboard. The two take the quick drive back to Folger's apartment, and upon arrival, the suspect spends a few more minutes saying goodbye with hugs and kisses. Jones gives one last lingering kiss, and Folger heads inside with one backwards glance at her lover. With intel in hand, the cheater's detectives head back to headquarters. Coming up, the confrontation. With the suspect's devious activities brought to light, Cheaters rushes to inform Stephanie of Jones's misdeeds. Hoping her distress happens to be unfounded, Stephanie summons the strength to view the truth. So Stephanie, the first thing I'd like to say is, you know, we really appreciate you coming out today. Some of the things you're about to see, Stephanie, may be a little bit disturbing. Okay. All right. Stephanie, on this day of our investigation, we are outside of your residence. A few moments later, 
Mike walks out, that's when we see him arrive at this residence. That female walks out, gets on the back of his bike, and they leave together. They arrive at this unknown residence. Mike receives a phone call while they're at this residence. Tell me if you remember this. After finishing up the phone call with you, Stephanie, after the party, he drops her off and he leaves. On this day of our investigation, Stephanie, Mike gets on his bike and leaves the house. He then arrives at that same residence. He puts his Harley on the stand, gives her a hug, helps her on the back, he hops on, and they ride away. That's when they arrive at your residence. We see her step off, Mike gets off the bike, and he grabs her by the hand, leading her inside. Stephanie, you recall that surveillance equipment I gave you? Yes. Remember where I told you to put it in your house? Yeah. This next shot is going to be from your internal surveillance. Oh my God. Your living room. They go inside. That's when we see Mike sit down on the couch. And in my house? In your house. Oh man. This girl begins to strip down. She takes off her skirt, takes off her shirt, throws her clothes at Mike, and then she begins to take off her top. That's when we see her. She's half nude, and then the top comes fully off. You see Mike oh my God. smiling as she leads him to the bedroom. A few hours later, after their exploits, he drops the companion back off at her house and returns home. Oh my God. At this point in time, why don't we get on the road, we get to that location, they're at the same place where that party was going on, that house. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, right this way. I'll tell you guys hey, hey, one hey, second. Hey, hey, we're just with a television show. I'm Clark Gable from Cheaters. Can I talk to you for a second? Yeah, yeah. Hey, I apologize. Are you serious? Hey, 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 what the? Babe, hey, babe, 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 babe. Babe. Oh, babe. Whoa, 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 whoa. Mike. Get out of here. Come on, what is this bull? With you. Babe, come on. They're at the same place where that party was going on. Hey! Are you serious? Hey! Hey! Hey, what the, what the f is that? That's my girl, okay? Look, I don't know what to you're say. The, you're the one going there. Really? What is this? What is your Can, can I talk to you for a second? Get away from me. Can I talk to you for a second? No, you can't talk to me. Where's my girl? Stephanie. Are you serious? Look, look. Are you serious? Really? You're going to be with somebody look. else this whole time? Just because I got locked up doesn't mean that you can just cheat on me and be with somebody else. What's wrong with you? I know you? this sounds stupid. Stupid. I don't understand. We've been together for two years. We have everything together. I don't get it. I don't understand. Where are you going? Where the what? F are you? I'm Clark Gable with the show Cheaters. Listen, the only reason why we're here is because this guy... I'll keep the cameras away from your face. Listen, I just have one question for you. Did he tell you that this was his girlfriend? Yeah, no, I, I'm his girlfriend. I'm the she is. Well, she's been incarcerated for quite some time, and she just got out recently. I'm about to be incarcerated in about five minutes. Get the cameras out of my face. You can't 
leave. Trust you no more. You can't leave. I can't go. Trust she can you leave. Anymore. We can get on the I can leave. Right. leave you piece of yeah, I can leave. Why don't you leave? Yeah, why don't I leave this? All y'all in my mother clubhouse. Hey, come on. Mike, you don't have, you don't have an apology or anything, man? Like, so what happened? How did you meet this other girl? What's her name, by the way? Look, she's been gone for four months. I love her dearly. Known her for like two years, okay? You love her so dearly. You had me in your, in your bed. I met some. In your bed and you love her so the needs I had. Okay, and what happened? Uh, well, this right here, obviously. This right here. You yeah, this right here. You're the one that you, you You're the one that jumped on the back house. of that I Harley you Davidson. I want, you because it... I want you out of my house. Get out of my house. Yeah. Yeah. Come out. Don't come there anymore ever again. I don't want to be with you anymore. Please, let's go. So Get me out of here. So that was your house? Yeah. Yes. This house is his. This is her this house? Is her house. This yes. house right That's here. This is her house. The one you guys slept you together in. You had me in her bed at her house. You're such a low life piece of shit. I can't believe I ever was with you. I don't even you know. You know, you don't know how to. Anyway. We've been, you, been together for like you. three months before you went down. Hey, okay? you got her. What? She's the one who was writing you letters. That was the one who was writing you letters the whole time. money on her books the whole time. She had, she didn't That's want why you didn't money. She had my jacket on, Mike. Get the out of here. Are you serious? Man, that you jacket. I bought you. that. Man, get I you. I made you. That's your jacket? Yeah. Get out, bro. Get out of here. Mike, you have nothing else to say, man? Like, what exactly I'm happened? Okay. And who is this other female? What's her name? Brandy, look, man, I met her at a bar. It's my jacket. It's my jacket. My jacket to me, my he gave it production. Gave it, gave it to you. She hired yeah, us to do a she job. Gave it to you. All right. She gave hired us to, to come wow. and watch you. Oh, who are you? Oh, oh, oh. Now we're on candy camera. Oh. You deserve that, you candy ass piece of Mike. See, I thought I deserve you when you crawled on the back of this piece of mother get yeah, out of here. right? I mean, put myself in her shoes. What if you were incarcerated at the time and you came here and you I've saw been her? I've been there. You know what? Whenever I get out, it's go home. And what's in the past is in the past. We keep moving forward. Can we not move forward? No, you don't think accepting letters from her would be something in the past? Oh, man. Oh, Where's these girls? Hey, get these bitches! Come on! So, so these days, when he took you into this house, you do oh realize that this is the house that they share together. No, I didn't know. Like the days. Are you of, serious? Yeah. No, this house. his mom house. That little placard in the window is my. Yeah. He said that was his mother's. Yeah. I'm walking around naked. Yeah. I'm ready to go. I got something for you. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to. Archie. Come here, come here. We've been together too long for this. All right, well, listen, Brandy, I apologize for, you know, this whole situation. Yeah, but for embarrassing me like this. My mom watches. You know, you know who, you know who did this to you? Mike, that's who did this. That's why I... Never again, you piece of... Yeah, Never right. again. You be Never back again. on this back of this mother... In a week. Get the out of here, you... Can you get out of my face? This is not where the action is. How the f am I supposed to get home now? Come here, come talk to me. Get the camera out of my face. I need my purse, I need my. So he was your ride home and everything? Yeah, well, obviously, I didn't walk here. Well, this has never happened before, but hop in. Will you two get along if you sit next to each other? I'm not going to touch her. I'm after you. Sorry about your clubhouse, boys. After the confrontation, Stephanie resolves to stay true to herself. Later, Cheaters updates you on how she copes with the changes in her life. But first, Kelsey Hart comes to the Cheater studio. 
Kelsey gives more insight about the time she unmasked her boyfriend with her very own roommate on Cheaters. When I first saw Kevin with my roommate and best friend, I was heartbroken. I, I was just shocked. Like, maybe I could imagine that he was cheating, but the fact that it was with my best friend that I've known for so long, I, it, was, it was heartbreaking. Like, my stomach just dropped immediately when I saw that. I absolutely feel that Kevin cheated on me. And not only did he cheat on me, but he cheated on me in the worst way possible. Like if, if your boyfriend cheats on you, the first person you wanna talk to is your best friend or someone that you're close to. You know, cause you, you need that comfort and that reassurance right then and there. And uh, he cheated on me with my best friend. So I was really kind of just left in the dark with the whole situation. You, you stupid no. bitch! Baby, baby. You are such baby. a bitch! Chelsea, stop! And you're a stop. 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 stop! Hey, come here. It's okay. It's okay. Look at me. You guys. Come here. <laughs> you're a door. Um, well, since the confrontation, I moved out. I got my own place. I've had no contact with Kim or Kevin, and things are going great for me. I'm just working, I've met a few new people, I'm talking to someone new, which is kind of a big step for me after this whole thing. I would like to say that things get better, and it's really rough at first, but knowing the truth is the absolutely most important thing, and time will heal all of it, no matter how bad it feels at first, or how angry you get, or upset, like, eventually, you will feel good again. Still reeling from the shock of the affair, Stephanie Valentine concludes that leaving the suspect maintains her dignity and her sanity. Stephanie currently lives with her family until she gets back on her feet. As for his part in the affair, Mike Jones tells cheaters he'd been trying to dissolve the relationship for quite a while. The suspect contends that soon after Stephanie went to jail, he felt free to find another girlfriend. The suspect's companion, Brandy Folger, only states to cheaters that she and Steph flags, Ian comes to question her fidelity. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. I really got suspicious about Veronica when uh, she was asleep, and like right when she was falling asleep, she was using her phone, so it was still open. And like I was like watching her, and I was like, well, what's going on? And she kept getting a couple more text messages. So I looked at it. And there was like some messages from her girlfriend, but it was like too many like smiley faces and emojis and stuff going on. And then there was like weird like breaks in the conversation, like stuff was being deleted. And when I ended up approaching her about it, she told me off, said it was her girlfriend, said that they were talking about girl stuff or like details about me. So that's why she was deleting them. So I kind of left it at that. Veronica, age 22, a grad student suspected of making better grades with another man. Cheaters Intel units surround the suspect's place of employment. After some time, the young woman emerges from the building. Unaware of the team of cheaters operatives behind her, Veronica drives to a nearby restaurant. The suspect meets with an unknown male and greets him with a hug and a smile. The male holds the door open and the couple enter the establishment. Well, before, like, she'd love going to the gym with me. She'd help me prep everything before we went to the gym, mix up our pre-workouts, make sure everything was ready, help me get my ankle weights ready. I went and got her a pair of ankle weights so that we could get everything, start going, get fit together. And then nowadays, she doesn't even want to go to the gym as often. She won't wake up early. She won't start prepping anything. I have to get everything ready. I basically have to drag her out of bed to try and get her to go to the gym with me because she's tired from picking up extra shifts at night. And I don't know, things just aren't nearly as good as they were in the beginning. As they sit at a sidewalk table, the suspect and her mysterious lunch date converse and eat. At some point, the companion shows Veronica the bad photo of his new ID card. 
Upon finishing their meal, Veronica and the young man walked to the suspect's car. The two, not quite finished with each other's company, lean on the vehicle and chat. Finally, the man leans over and gives Veronica a goodbye hug. The suspect gets into her car and her consort saunters away. She gets really angry whenever I would try to like pick at details about where she's been whenever she like gets off work from whenever she's picking up a shift or something. There's no evidence of her actions of going to work all the time. Like sometimes she's not even wearing her work clothes when she gets back and she claims that she's changing and stuff, but I don't even see the work clothes in her car or anything and like I can't really trust her, but I don't want to call her out on stuff because then she just gets more mad. If Cheaters gets it all out there like solid like if we can catch something or if we don't find anything at all and we know for sure then we can move on from there and we can try and figure out what we're going to do in the future cheaters detectives keep vigil over ian and veronica's home on this particular evening the suspect gets into her car and drives off shadowed by the cheater squad veronica journeys across town to a pizzeria Apparently, the male from previous surveillance, now identified as Rafe Coilant, has been waiting for the suspect. The conspirators greet each other and head inside the restaurant. Veronica and Coilant act too familiar to be innocent as they hold hands while waiting for their meal. The suspect and her beau eat in silence and stare romantically at each other. A while later, Coilant escorts Veronica to her parked vehicle. They chat for a few minutes, and Veronica gives Coilant a passionate embrace goodbye. The two go their separate ways, indicating to cheaters that they need to wrap up the day's surveillance. With the intel from Ian that he works a double shift, cheaters' agents continue the stakeout of Ian and Veronica's residence. Sometime later, Coilant arrives and works his way up the sidewalk. Interior surveillance cameras placed by Ian show the suspect greeting her extra boyfriend at the door. Veronica and Quillant get comfy on the sofa and watch some television. After a few minutes, Veronica gets up and heads to the kitchen. The suspect returns momentarily with refreshment. Veronica settles herself back on the couch using the blanket to keep warm and the pair begin to snuggle. The suspect stands and stretches and once again moves into the kitchen. Veronica returns with two plates. The food gets ignored, however, as the suspect lies down on the couch with her head in Quillant's lap. The young man eventually stands up to flip off the lights, creating a more romantic atmosphere. Veronica leans in to kiss Quillant. The suspect and her lover make out for a while, and then they finally decide to do the deed in the comfort of a bed. Sometime later, as Quillant leaves toward home, Cheaters makes its own move back to headquarters to prep the package for a dejected Ian. Coming up, the confrontation. Confirming the suspect's secret dalliances, Cheaters contacts Ian to view the damaging evidence. Concerned about the outcome of the surveillance, Ian forces himself to view the truth. So as you know, Ian, we have conducted our surveillance per your request, but I want to warn you before I show you this, some of this may be disturbing, it may make you angry, it may make you feel a lot of different things. So I'm going to do my best to just show it to you, then we're going to go and confront Veronica. All right? All right. So Ian, we begin our investigation outside of the residence that you share with Veronica, your apartment. A few moments later, we see Veronica emerge. She walks over, unlocks her car, she gets in, and she leaves. As our detectives follow Veronica, she arrives at a restaurant, pulls into the parking lot, and parks her vehicle. As she's getting out, she's greeted by this male. That's when the two of them walk into the pizza joint they grab a bite, and I see them sit outside, and they start to hold hands. He's trying to get somewhere else with this, and uh, she's letting it happen. That's just, that's wrong. On this day of our investigation, Ian, we are outside of the residence that you share with Veronica. A few moments later, we see Veronica's vehicle parked right out in front. That's when we see this gunmetal gray sedan pull up, and that gentleman from your gym arrives. You recall that camera that was installed inside of your living room? Yep. 
Well, the next shot that you're going to see is from that camera internally inside your house. All right. So we see Veronica. She greets this gentleman. He comes into your home. She shuts the door and locks it. That's when we see the two of them sit down on the couch. They put a movie on. She gets up and she goes and prepares him a plate of food. Comes back with it. I mean, she's feeding this guy inside of your home. She hasn't cooked me in a while. During this time, Ian, she receives a phone call. And what you're about to hear is the audio from that. So tell me if this resonates to you, if you remember this. Obviously, you could see that that's not what she was doing. She's got a guy in your house, and shortly after the phone call, we see them under candlelight, and they kiss. I've, I've got what I need to know right there, man. That's that's all you want to see? Yeah. I, right. think, I think I'm done with that right now. So, Ian, at this point in time, man, I understand that you're a little upset. Why don't we go ahead and get in the vans? We'll get some intel from our detective on their location. Are you ready to go confront these two? Yeah, I think so. All right, right this way. This is our detective. Give me one second. Hello? Hey, man, what's going on? Okay, yeah. I'll let him know. All right, thanks. So, Ian, that was the detective. Basically, what he told me is, is they're at the apartment that you two share. You know what, we're pulling up right here. You ready? Yep, let's go. Here, come up this way. Down the corner. Can you pull them apart, please? There you go. The f man? Broke ass piece of Who the f are you? Do you? Who the f you told think you, you are? Me? Who the f you think you are? I've been going out with her for freaking two years, man. I don't give a Coming up, the conclusion. They're at the apartment that you two share. What the f is this? Oh. You are. I've been out with her for freaking two years, man. I don't give a what are you gonna do about it, huh? Move it. There you go. Let him go. Okay. Pussy, this is my apartment, man. What are you doing over here? Uh, you're not doing a good job taking care of your girl, bro. If I'm out of her, you. Get this. Can you explain to him what's going on? Um. How long has this been going on? Like, what's happening? Like, it's not. It's not been very long. Did you have any idea that this was her boyfriend of two years? Did she tell you that or anything? I mean, she might have mentioned it, but it doesn't matter because she's with me. So why does it matter? So what exactly happened? How did you guys end up? How did this whole thing go? I mean, did you guys just meet at the gym and? Yeah, we just met at the gym. She's a like cool girl. You. Like, yeah. I just wanted to hang out with her, and like we got to know each other. And this douchebag comes out of nowhere. Like, who the do you think you are, bitch? He's her boyfriend, man. That's what I you gotta. Who I am? I don't give. He's not doing a good job being a boyfriend, is he? No, Broke, doesn't have a job. You this guy? No. This little pussy? Fuck you. Who the fuck are you calling a pussy? I can look more than I you. I saw bitch. the video. You guys freaking making out on the couch. You're an insecure little bitch. I'm not insecure. You're insecure. That's bull. I just need to know what the fuck's going on here. I mean, fuck you like who the fuck the are you like, attacking people like that? I got some magic nine inch body. <laughs> Pull them, apart, pull them apart, pull them apart. Relax. So what exactly was your, why, why would you let this happen? You're seeing two people fight, that's your boyfriend that you live with still. I mean, did you just tell this gentleman that this wasn't your boyfriend? Did I tell who? Him, like what did you tell him exactly to get him to come into your home that you share with She's Ian? She's being a whore. We've just been hanging out for a little bit. You guys have shared a lot of time together. How long has this been going on between the two of you? Like a month, like why? matter. A month? 
A month is a very long time. So what did she tell you? Did she tell you she had a boyfriend or did she tell you she was breaking up with him? Cause no, that- she mentioned this guy. Like she just mentioned that he, she was with him. Like she might've been with him, like gone on a few dates. Like what the But she didn't tell you that it was actually her no, boyfriend. No, I didn't know that they were together for two years. You had no idea? No. You actually told him about us and he doesn't care. Like he doesn't care. This guy's got no balls. He's, he's not a man if he's able to do this with somebody else's woman. Is that woman. my fault? Is it her fault? Hey, Matt, so listen, you should have asked her that. You just have, you, do you have just no problem with doing this to your boyfriend? No, I don't. Because you don't I seem don't to have much hurt. emotion to, to I don't this. want to hurt him or anything. Rafi's oh. been there for me. Then they're doing what exactly? Does he show up and tip you well or something? Veronica, we're just trying to get answers here. I'm not trying to embarrass you or anything, but this is kind of a serious matter. I mean, I have your boyfriend that you live with here, and then a gentleman that you've lied to said that you were not with this man. You know what? I'm done with this bullshit. Like, this is drama. I don't need it. Like, goodbye. Oh, you're going to give up now? Don't you want to take her? I mean, it's better than you creeping out on her, like, with all this Like, who the you are? Huh? Why don't you control your girl then? I'm not controlling. I'm not a dick. I'm a gentleman. I'll be nice about it. Gentlemen don't do this. Well, they do when they need to to freaking gut out a whore. Why the f*** are you following me? Get the out of my face. Like, get out of here. Get the out of here. I'm sick of this boy. Get the out of here. Mazda? What the are you all doing? I said get the out of here. What the man? He's obviously made his choice. I'm getting out of here. I'm going home. I'm going to throw your out. No. Look at all the people. I don't know who are they. I have no idea. Get your out of here. Taking all your laundry, all your. You're going. Out of here. Please don't make anything. What do you think? You made, what do you want to do? I'm done this with is this. To you. I'm done with all this. You're I'm done, done with this? her. I want to get rid of her. I want to cut it all off right now. I don't want to deal with her anymore. I'm just going to go upstairs and go to bed, man. Think about this. I'm really sorry about yeah, your chick, but you know what? It was, uh, you know, I did my best, man, and that's all we could do. I'm gonna get out of here, man. All right, Thank man. Thank you, though. Get out of my face! After the confrontation, Ian takes time to mull over his circumstances. At the end of the show, Cheaters informs you on what he decides. But first, Dolly comes forward in an attempt to further separate herself from the day she discovered the suspect's lies on cheaters. We went to work together. We met in the elevator on the way up one morning and um, we got to talking and he was telling me, hey, you know, I'm really interested in you. I just got out of a relationship and I would like to get to know you. And, you know, I told him, hey, well, why don't we just start off slow and hang out? And so for six months, it just progressed. Is this your boss? This your lunch date? Damn, why she got to start singing? Get out of the car. (laughs) Who the f am I? I'm a Did you know he's been living with me for three years? We've been together for six years. Did you know? Oh, my God. She she doesn't even know? She doesn't even know? What the f is going on? No, this is my turn. No, no. It's my turn now. You're cheating on me, and she doesn't even know? I don't even know if I was the only girl that he was with because of everything that was found in the car, like the condoms and the bras. They obviously weren't mine because they were humongous. And there was a pair of panties that she found that were mine. And 
I don't even know how they got in his car. I was so grossed out after that. It was disgusting. They caught you! How you are busted! How long has it been going, been going You tell me! Sean, is that a condom? What? Is that a condom right there? Oh, nice! Yeah. What's that What's that for? I, that, I don't even mind, man. It can't be mine. It's not for It can't be yours. That's not yours? But there's an open package that I just threw out of your console, but it's not what yours. About that, uh, what about it's not that? yours. You got, do you have like, what, what? Is this the reason why, uh, open it? Look, how do you know that wasn't for me? It. Look, man, nothing. Don't get me that attitude. You're the one in the wrong. Get off my face. Look, you done found your stuff. You done so. found stuff. You done found stuff. Whose is this? That's Whose for, is this? That's for you. That's for me. It's not yeah. for me. There's not even tags on it. So what else are you doing, huh? Whose is this? He's contacted me and trying to apologize. And you know, I just told him I don't want to hear it. I'm not gonna forget what he did. And I don't want to see him. And it's like I told him then at the confrontation. I don't ever want to speak to you. I don't want to talk to you. Don't even look my direction. Right now, I'm not really looking for something. I'm really just enjoying myself. But in the future, I'm definitely going to ask way more questions and keep my eyes more open to the red flags. Following the violent confrontation, Ian Sutter demands distance between him and his girlfriend. Ian has moved his now ex-girlfriend out of their home, claiming that he doesn't care where she goes. Feigning outrage at her treatment by Ian, the suspect makes the claim that Cheaters is responsible for her breakup. The suspect currently searches for a new residence. The suspect's companion attempts to deflect the blame for the affair, claiming that the suspect lied to him as well as her boyfriend. When reminded by Cheater's producers what he had admitted during the confrontation, Quillant responds with a resounding, What? Now this is all my fault? A few expletives later, the companion slams.